everyone welcome back to the trend today's trending topic is country music and its ex exclusivity specifically inspired by the fact that beyonce dropped two country singles and what's been in, like the reaction towards it we like to have discussions about music and stuff like this we like to do deep dives reactions if you like it subscribe if you want and we also have our community page where we take it a little further and you guys can discuss there too so I just found that the discourse around Beyonce's country music was really interesting because like it was just it's almost like it was expected to happen but you're still shocked when you hear certain things. Every time I see a white person get genuinely angry at the fact that Beyonce is dipping into country I'm shocked. Like, I didn't know that this could be such a pressing issue, and it feels like it only happens with country fans who are a certain demographic. Like, this would never happen with any other genre. Like, if Ariana Grande dipped into, like, I don't know, K-pop, people wouldn't be like, why is she doing- well, maybe some people, but, like, it wouldn't have such, like, a strong, vigorous reaction of, like, <laughs> I hate Ariana Grande. You think people aren't gonna make fun of Arigato Grande? <laughs> They, they did it! So they let her say Ari Chan and get away with it! That's true. Like, um, yeah, and I don't want to highlight and or bring attention to any of the racist, nasty stuff. I'm not going to reference anything and I'm not going to talk about it. They can spew into the... Abyss. Yeah, and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Let them smell their own shit, basically. Oh but I do think, like, again, it opens up a conversation of, like, why is country music so exclusive? Mm -hmm. And why do are the fans so critical of who see, who wants to participate in the genre? Yeah. So, just to start off, I was like, okay, let's deep dive into, like, the origins of country music and, like, its characteristics. And I know, again, because Beyonce, it's like a lot of stuff has been coming to the surface, being made more aware. And I was like, you know what, let me just deep dive a teeny tiny bit. And I can share with you guys what I found. So I was like, okay, what technically classifies something as country music? Like, again, what makes something R&B? What makes something hip-hop? Like, mm, yeah. simpler terms, they call it three chords and the truth. I was like, okay. Easy Question enough to mark. remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but then I was like, okay, let's get a little deeper. So they, ha you have the vocal style, right? Yeah. So that's like singing with the twang, yeah, singing with the slang. Yeah. And then you have the musical style. Guitars and shit. Guitars and shit. <laughs> Here comes a country accent. <laughs> I didn't even need um, to. <laughs> well, it's just the fact that the music tends to be more simple and the melodies oh. and stuff are a little easier to yeah, consume in a way. True. You know? And again, like the the use of live instruments in country mm -hmm. music is really important and the types of instruments they use, right? A lot of guitars, fiddles, mandolins, banjos, which I will come back to. And the last thing is, like, the lyrical theme. So they're really, it's almost like music that's easy to listen to, right? So it's mm. like, here's an everyday struggle we all go through. Here's, like, emotional family stuff that we all go through. Like, yeah. it's really thematic and really emotional responses. It, like, they induce emotional responses, the songs, basically. Yeah. which all music does as well. Yes, but, because I was thinking that, I was like, what type of music isn't really like that? And to be frank, a lot of pop music isn't, like, storytelling and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I actually think that's a fair argument, although I do advocate for the fact that yeah. there, there are deep pop artists. Yeah, I think that's where you start to get stigmas and stuff. But it's like, I can't lie, sometimes I like hearing Doja Cat rap about fruit. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I like a K-pop group that's just going off about, like... Ice cream cake. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. But sometimes you are in the mood for that, like, you know, more reflective type of yeah, music. Yeah, The more storytelling side of it. Yeah. But one of the things... So back to the musical style. One of the... Honestly, one of the... I don't want to say, like, the face of country. But, like, the banjo is a really significant symbol in country music and i do want to give a little shout out to as if she'll ever see this but i just found it really insightful rhiannon giddens i hope i'm saying that right so she's a performer she's in a band like she makes country music she makes folk music a lot of you know different mm -hmm. things but she she did a whole interview with um i believe it's variety all the interviews and stuff i used to reference this information is going to be in the description box by the way uh, where she really, like, dived deep, deep into the history of country music and the banjo and stuff like that. I just found it interesting, like, because this is where it starts off, honestly. It starts off with a tweet, and if you have two and a half brain cells, I'm sorry, you will deep dive and you will see. You know, you don't yeah. take tweets for truth. 
but the banjo originated in West Africa, actually. Oh, yeah. interesting. And that type of history, she was saying in the article, like, it's a very neglected piece of history, and it's neglected purposefully. I was gonna say, like, funny that that's what got forgotten yeah, out of everything. Yeah, right? So, yeah, the banjo was basically invented by enslaved Africans who so west africans that became enslaved or brought over enslaved sorry for the wrong phrasing um to the caribbean and that's where it started to become more popular and then it made its way to maryland and that's where it became more commercial but at that point like that's when you start having a different face of an artist using yeah. that instrument wow that's kind of insane yeah so that's like that's why i'm saying the banjo is such a symbol of country music yeah. And, okay, so, like, that's the musical side of it, right? So let's go back to the vocal style and, like, the lyrical style almost. So it's, it has a lot of its roots, the sound of country music, and a lot of, like, African-American musical genre. So a lot of, like, blues, yeah. gospels, spirituals. Yeah. Also, like, European folk music and stuff. There's also other influences, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to stay on there. So I want to make a point of like why I'm focusing more on these types of genres that influence country music is because there's a clear distinction of when the music industry started to try to market those types of music to certain audiences. So like blues and so blues and that type of stuff were basically called race records. So those were, race records were basically music that was made by African Americans and then targeted to African Americans. Right. And the problem with that was that um, race music really was like an all-encompassing genre. So you'd have blues in there, you'd have jazz, you'd even have comedy in there. Like, it was oh. like, it was basically it's like... It's like an umbrella term. Yeah, but, but just for them. Yeah. Yeah. And so while on the flip side, you had hillbilly music or country music. So that's made by rural white Americans targeted to white Americans. So so you had race records that was basically like an all-encompassing genre, which was basically music made by black people for black people. Mm -hmm. And then you had, you know, music made by white people for white people that was more categorized. Okay. But the thing is, is that so when they started to, again, steal music, because that's what happens, you would have them doing blues music but they would put it into the country. Oh. If that makes sense. You know, whereas, like, because African Americans didn't have blues as a genre, as it was a, just race records. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so they're, like, rebranding it as its own thing. Yes, it's and so they're taking credit for it as being the face of it. That's crazy. Yeah. Not surprised. What's it called? Shocked, but not surprised. <laughs> yeah, sadly. So, yeah, as the music industry started to become more developed, and obviously, like, black people were getting more rights and stuff like that, they stopped using the term race records in 1949, and that it, the genre essentially became rhythm and blues, which kind of allowed it to become more specific, if that makes sense. Because yeah. now you have black artists that yeah. are entering country charts, are entering pop charts, are entering blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but I say that also saying we all know that a lot of award shows, a lot of categories, a lot of people still put mainly black people in rhythm and blues yeah like r&b charts or urban charts yeah and to be honest i feel as though they do this with a lot of other like there's a, there's just a lot of racism and xenophobia in award shows just in general because i feel as though they put anything that's not theirs into its own like category like yeah. just so that it can't be like for example album of the year yeah or like a really general award they like give it these like side category things yeah like i keep seeing this discourse around oh uh, when's the grammy's gonna put a k-pop category in you know like k-pop music is dominating it's mm -hmm. a huge part of the music industry especially internationally like around the world but uh, the other side of the discussion is do you want a k-pop category because, babes, I'm sorry to say, as soon as it's there, that's where you're going to win. Yeah, like, they're like, going to throw everybody in there. It doesn't matter if, for example, when Jungkook did a pop album, fully pop song, all in English, 
And they still couldn't put him in the normal pop category. Yeah. Like, they're they're going to throw every pop or K-pop song into that category as soon as it's made. Yeah, so you have, like, the urban categories, you have the Latin categories, yeah. K-pop, like, but you don't... But the problem with that is that white artists can still enter those genres, but the ethnic artists can't enter the main genre. Yes, they will never be awarded as, like, song of the year or yeah. whatever. So that's why when I was searching, I was like, oh, this music is not only, like, heavily influenced by African Americans and their culture, but it's also just catfishing as them, basically. Yeah. And I say that to say, I was like, okay, like, let's look at the top country music artists of... St from 2024, let's say. Sure. Let's see, look at the faces of country music. Are we surprised that they're all white? No, we're not surprised. Yeah. I mean, I just Google search top country artists. And again, because I did base this video around Beyonce, I was like, let's look at the top female country artists. All white. All yeah. White, all older. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, you know what? When was the first time that I saw this type of backlash in terms of country music? Because I feel like, obviously, like, it's a historical thing. Everyone knows. But I'm only... I just turned 25. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> but I was like, when's the last time I really saw it, like, thrown in my face? Mm -hmm. And for me, personally, it was with Lil Nas X. And Old, Old Town, Town Road. Road. Yeah. yeah. And if you remember the reaction to it, like, it was not some small thing. Like, it was yeah. a very big conversation, very big debate about what billboard charts was doing with Lil Nas X's song yeah and just on impact alone Old Town Road has holds a record on billboard 100 having the longest weeks staying at number one for which is 19 weeks but it didn't have a warm introduction by billboard charts if I do say so myself or country fans for that fact oh surprise surprise <laughs> surprise surprise yeah, shocked. So when it first came out, it obviously went to number one. It was super popular. Or it entered the charts. I can't remember if it was number one. But then they immediately took it down because they were like, oh, it's not country enough. Not country enough? What makes a song not country enough? Well, here's the thing. So people do break down the fact that this... I mean, the pulling of the song was just completely unjustified. But I also found it funny that I felt like pulling the song made it more popular and made it more open up for debate than just letting the song enter the country music charts. Yeah. Um, they gatekeep the shit out of it. And I, I don't, I really don't understand why. Yeah, like, no one's that particular about R&B music. No one's that particular about hip hop music. Yeah, I don't know why they feel so protective over the genre. Like, a lot of the comments that I've been seeing are like, like, I would never play this song because it's not real country. It's not true country. They're not a country artist. But it's like, realistically, artists dip into several genres, like, all the time. Yeah. Like, that's such a normal thing for an artist. But it's like, for country, it's like, no, you have to be exclusively country. Why? Well, but it's... Well, here's the thing. It has to be exclusively country if you're not white. And I say that to say, so... Basically, Billboard's reason for pulling the song was saying even though they talk about cowboys, even though it references cowboys, it's not, it doesn't have enough country music elements. But when you break the song down, Old Town Road uses the instruments, uses mm -hmm. like a lot of the instruments that I was referencing earlier. He sings with an accent. And mm -hmm. what's funny is I've noticed a lot of the articles from that time were all referencing him as a rapper. And at that mm -hmm. point, this was his only song and he wasn't even rapping on the song. You're lying. I could be wrong, but I was like, either way, even if he had songs that he was rapping on, he wasn't known as a rapper. Like, this is the song that blew him up. Why are you referencing him as a rapper? We can guess why they referenced him as a rapper. Okay. And lyrically, like, he was talking about, like, really emotional stuff. Like, he was even saying, like, the reason he wrote that song is because he was feeling so depressed, like, just mm. living at home, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, check, check, like, yeah. you know, lyrical, musical, thematic, and vocal. Let's say regardless, like, it doesn't sound like a typical country song, you know, we're not gonna lie, like, it doesn't, but you have other songs that have entered the country music charts that have never been stripped, like, Meant to Be by B.B. Rexa and Florida Georgia Lines. That That's song awesome. has a full-on 808 beat and pop. It's a pop country song, but that yeah. song's never been pulled for its validity, and B.B. Rex is not a country artist. Yeah, so I find that that's what bothers me the most about, I guess, 
Oh, not only award shows, but also like charting systems or whoever runs charting systems is they're extremely pick and choosy with what gets to go on and they have no justification for it when you actually question them. And I might be saying this almost having too much grace for these people because it's like they don't deserve it and it's also making other people suffer where I'm like, you know what? Everyone has unconscious, unconscious bias. Everyone has their own preconceptions that they're not even made aware of. Mm -hmm. But how you respond to being corrected is really what shows, like, the type of person you are. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, are we shocked that probably these 50, 60-year-olds running Billboard charts are pulling Old Town Road because they don't think it's country? Yeah. No. Not really. But how they respond to it, I think, is the bigger problem. Yeah. It's like the resistance to change, and people always use that excuse for old people. Yeah. Um, but it's like to double down and say, well, even though he's talking about cowboys, it's not a country song. It's like, babes, yeah. have you heard the song? Like, it doesn't sound like a pop song. Yeah. Uh, old people are like, mm, I won't say all old people, but a lot of old people or some old people are just extremely resistant to change. And you cannot change their opinions for the fucking life of you. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter how many facts you present them, how many you walk down a checklist of what country music is and you say check, check, check. Like, they will sit there, be stuck in their ways. It's, it's insane. Yeah. It's like talking to a wall. Yeah. And someone like Jason Aldean, he's a really famous country music artist. Like, he has a song called Dirt Road Anthem. And that peaked number seven on Billboard country charts. And there's, he raps on it. Or, like, there's rapped verses on there. Interesting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess why he's a white man. So <laughs> the next person I bring up, just because I always find, obviously, there's a, especially recently, a lot of discourse comparing her and Beyonce, which is Taylor Swift. And I just think her career trajectory has been really interesting. So despite the fact that she hasn't had a country music album since 2011, and only three out of her 10 albums really are country, she's still listed as a top country artist in a lot of these forms. And I get it because it's based off sales and yada, yada, yada. But I'm like, how is that a country music artist? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can understand why people want to call Beyonce a country music artist. Yeah. But then they'll go ahead and call someone like Taylor a country music artist. Yeah. Like, she doesn't even necessarily have that, like, connection to country music, which is debatable. I saw someone making a joke of, like, she grew up, like, the rich cowboy, or not rich, uh, rich horseback riding, like, side of stuff. Oh. Um, okay. True. But yeah, but let's be real, like, Taylor Swift, when she came out, had an accent, she talked like this, and then as soon as Red came out, the accent was gone. <laughs> like, I don't even think... Fair, her. though. Like, yeah. Fair. Do yeah. what you got, like, do, like have fun, girly. Like, get your money you up. Do, get your money up. Like, I'm not here to judge her. I'm here to judge people that use her as, like, a proposition for their pick and choosing, cherry picking. Yeah. Well, it also had me thinking, like, why are people so quick to accept Taylor Swift as a country music artist in 2024, but still really resistant to people like Lil Nas X and Beyonce? One of the reasons is obviously the race reason. Like, we're not idiots. And if you want to deny that, your business. But also, I think it's because she aligns herself with one of the important facets of country music, which is her songwriting. So the fact that the themes of the songs for country music is so important to them, and she really aligns herself as, like, being a songwriter, and she writes really personal stuff, I think makes them more comfortable calling her a country artist as well. Yeah. Like, no one really references Taylor Swift as this great vocalist or as this great performer, but it's always her songwriting skills that people fall back on as, like... Yeah, that's... One that's of the, what's impressive. That's what's extremely impressive, and one of the main reasons why she's as respected as she is is for her songwriting. And songwriting is such a valued skill in country music. Yeah. Do you feel like it's just easier to categorize people based off of how comfortable you are seeing them in that space, whether it's right or wrong? So it's easier to say Taylor Swift is a country music artist, e even though she hasn't really made country music in a really long time yeah. because you're comfortable seeing her in that category. Yeah. But at the same time, it's so easy to put black artists in an R&B category, even if that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know? It, it's just like a collection of personal biases. And that it's like they try to be objective or they hide under this cover of being objective. But the truth is, it's literally just a collection of personal biases and yeah. racism and et cetera, et cetera. Like, I, I don't even consider them like 
remotely objective in their basis of who's this artist, who's this artist. Yeah, who's completely not. Uh, and I mean, I know this is a, this is a side note, but I I know this has always been a discussion. But I just use this as an example of like when Beyonce lost self title to Beck, people were saying like, oh, just because she was more popular doesn't make sense. He put he had way more creative control. He had a lot of um, creative aspects. It was a better produced. He wrote every instrument or he used every instrument. He wrote every song. That's why she lost. The next time when she lost Lemonade to Adele, they said, um, it doesn't matter that Beyonce had a more creative album, 25 and Hello were the more popular songs. It's like, well, I thought you said self-titled lost because it's not about popularity. Yeah. It's not even worth like the conversation. Energy, that conversation. Yeah. It's like, okay, you just do what you want, I guess. Yeah. And I use that to, let's transition into Beyonce and her poems. I feel like the main topic of this conversation and like the inspiration behind it basically is that it's easier to categorize Beyonce based off what she looks rather than what she does and mm -hmm. who, and what she looks like is a black woman. Mm -hmm. Point like, and I know we just said it, but it is really blatant when you see how the Grammys tend to categorize her, how the Grammys tend to award her as like the biggest music award show. But if you use a second, like, to Beautiful use your brain, <laughs> it's it's really not out of the ordinary for Beyonce to be doing country music in 2024. Yeah, like, she's from Texas. Represents. Like, it, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, it, this bitch bleeds H-Town every time you ask her something. The accent is real. The accent is real. Um, but the other thing is also the the lyric and story writing of her songs. Like, 16 Carriages is, like, precisely what I guess they're looking for in terms yeah. of country music. Yeah. I mean, even Texas Hold'em. Like, Texas Hold'em is maybe not as emotional as some country music songs are. But, again, not every country music song is. Is, yeah. But it does sound like it. Yeah. She's always repped the fashion. She's always integrated it. Like, I just don't see... I, d I just don't understand why it's so shocking for her. But I will say her entering country music is a pretty big distinction from music she's previously made. And it is, again, what we're saying, a whitewashed genre of music, basically. But it's the fact that Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, again, if you've done a little bit of research, isn't even her first introduction into making country music. Oh, yeah. Doesn't she have daddy lessons? Yeah. And granted, like, it is just a track. But I feel like it's, like, a pretty, not famous song, but I feel like for her, to country music fans, it, it, like, it's, they know she's done it. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? And I say that because even in 2016, she performed it with the Dixie Chicks at the Country Music Awards, and the backlash ah. they got from it, yeah, because they felt like she didn't deserve to be performing on that stage because she's not a country music artist. Oh, my God. But it's a country song. This is so, like, it's just insane. Incredible. And I guess they can rate those shows now by the 15 minutes. It's Absolutely. the highest rated 15 minutes in CMA history. And then they start getting, you know, racist assholes bombarding their website with comments and emails and whatever. And so they take her down. They took our performance down and, no. and caved to that bullshit. And then they... I guess, got so much bad press for doing that. Within 24 hours, they put it back up again. Just cowards. It's just crazy. She just gave you your greatest ratings that you've ever gotten. How dare you take her song off? It was... Yeah. I just... I almost have no words for it because I'm just so in shock and, like, questioning why, why they gatekeep this so hard. Yeah. So then I was thinking, okay... I thought of why is Taylor so accepted into country music? Why is Beyonce so not accepted into country music? So the first thing that I noticed was I do feel like her liberal leaning politics, like she makes them very obvious and they don't like that. You know, especially uh. back in 2016, like her take on Black Lives Matter and police brutality. And mm. it's like, they're subjects that are really consistent with like contemporary conservative ideals, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. A lot of people just don't tend to agree with the, that type of mentality. So it's like, okay, you already don't have the morals of country music fans. Quote unquote, but sure. Yeah, quote unquote. And at the same time, she performed with the Dixie Chicks, who were basically blacklisted because they also had more liberal views and, you know, they had their whole thing with George Bush and stuff like that. Mm 
Mm. On the flip side, you have Taylor Swift, who up until maybe, what, a couple years ago, and she really hasn't touched base back on it again. She's never really made her political views known. Yeah. And I know even in her documentary, Taylor Swift was talking about how she was always told, like, don't make your politics known. Like, don't enter that conversation. Whereas mm. Beyonce's always been very head forward of where she stands. Yeah. Especially through her music. Like, it's not like Beyonce's sitting up here doing interviews being like, Black Lives Matter, like, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Like, her message comes through her art. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like that message, you're not going to consume the art. Mm -hmm. The second reason, hate to say it, but it's a fact, like, they don't like seeing a Black woman being the face of the music industry in whole. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, it's like they're okay if she's, like, the face of R&B, and she's the face of pop, and she's the, but the face of the music industry is a Black woman. Mm. And I feel like they want to keep it so she doesn't represent country music, at least. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, well, at least we can have this one thing if she is going to basically yeah. dominate everything else. And that's the thing, is that she's topped several different Billboard charts, like pop, R&B, house, like, country at this point. So many. I'll, like, have them listed here. And it's something that hasn't been done before, like, 27 years into her career and she's still competing with, like, new artists. Yeah. And always, like, outdoing her own self, too. To make it a point, like, just as an example, when she first came out and she charted with No, 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 number three on Billboard, she was on the chart with Will Smith, Usher, Celine Dion, Madonna. Wow. And now with Texas Hold'em, who is she on the charts with? Jack Harlow, Kanye West, Benson Boone, Teddy Swims. She's a different type of competition to these people honestly and the last thing that i thought where i was like okay why isn't beyonce so welcomed into country music and i think because country music is so focused on personal topics i can see why it's hard for them to associate someone like beyonce with the genre because of how exclusive she's made herself since her self-titled album if that makes sense. Um, exclusive in what way? Like, and, exclusive, like, withdrawn from media? Yeah. Yeah, but she still talks about it in her other songs. But that's what I'm saying. If you don't have that image of her, like, if you don't listen to R&B music, right? Yeah. You're not going to uh, listen to the album, okay, so true. you're not going to know what she's talking about in those albums. Yeah. You're just going to think, oh, she's just a woman that sings about sex and love and being sexy yeah. and whatever. Yeah. So it's like she doesn't, because she's withdrawn herself from that, I don't think they have that image of her being personal enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like that you have to put all of your business online for people to like... Relate to you. Relate to you and get to know you. And then I don't know why that's so closely tied to music. Like for me, that is not tied to music at all. Like I don't care if I actually know what you do in your personal life or your personal business. Unless it's like genuinely bad behavior. Like I don't care. I'll still listen to your music. Yeah. But I also feel like Beyonce only goes down this path because I genuinely don't think she wants the fame. And I think she just wants the music. And I think it's because she watched her predecessors become completely exploited by their popularity in the industry, like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, and how it ruined their lives, especially as Black artists. Yeah. Like, it's very different type of treatment versus, you know, being a white artist and being that level of fame. And I think she knows she'll never become unfamous at this point, but the mm -hmm. least she can do is at least protect what she has. I do think Beyonce making country music is really impactful, especially to other black women in the genre, because it's just a reminder of how white and male driven that category has historically been. So people were saying that up until last year, Luke Combs, who covered Fast Car by Tracy Chapman, freaking love that song, love that great movie performance, by the way. No black woman had ever been the sole writer on a number one country song. Oh, ever. wow. Yeah. And she's the first black woman to top the country music charts as well. I'm really glad that Beyonce is starting to go more deeply into country because I feel as though it's kind of like what you said. She's kind of at that level where she doesn't really care that much. And because she's do she's the one that's doing it, she's kind of like opening up another door for other artists to be able to come in as well. And it really does have to be her to do it because, again, she's as big as she is and has as much resources as she does and the, the confidence that she does. 
to be able to do it, like, I think it's really important that it comes from her. Yeah, like, I think she's made it obvious at this point of her career. She doesn't care if you stream the music. She doesn't care if she's number one. What she cares more about is her impact. And Brianna Giddens, I believe she plays the, she plays an instrument on, I can't remember if it's Texas Hold'em or 16 Carriages. And last year she said, as soon as somebody like Beyonce picks up the banjo and starts talking about the history, we're good. And I feel like that's just a hint of the power that Beyonce holds. And I do see her as someone that tries to make an impact on her industry. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't think she steps out and she's like, I'm trying to revolutionize this or I'm branding myself as an activist in this. Like, yeah. music is her thing and that's how she'll get her message across. Yeah, and it's not like at this point I don't think she's dying for the validation of these, like, old white men. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I really don't think she cares that much. Yeah, and I just feel like whenever Beyonce moves in music, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, she makes real thought-provoking, co- uncomfortable conversations happen. Yeah. And I think being able to go from the digital, digital, physical era of sales to digital era of sales to now streaming, she adapts, but she also maintains her own integrity for her music. And I think integrity and the way the fans consume and celebrate with it yeah for sure we're all one i learned a lot i loved <laughs> today's episode or whatever yeah. we call it <laughs> not surprised that a lot of the good things that we have especially in music come from black people in fact i think that that's like a very common theme that we've seen throughout everything and i'm really glad that with Beyonce starting, like, this conversation, you're actually starting to, like, do more history diving. It's like, okay, well, where did country music actually start? Because since these white people are trying to gatekeep it so hard and be like, don't stream Beyonce's country music, don't stream this or that, you're like, wait, let me pull up the receipts. Like, let me actually go into the history. Yeah, you're like, what are you trying to hide right now? (laughs) What are you trying to hide right now? Like, I'm really happy that, like, this conversation was brought up because, again, like, you start to look in the history and you're like, oh, no, like, Black, like, cu- black people did invent country music, like, the banjo, the thematic experiences, the, the soul that country has of, like, coming from traumas, like, let's be honest. I tried to make this as informative but still digestible as I could, and I still feel like I only skimmed the top of it. Um, I highly recommend the Rhiannon Giddens interview because I found that very interesting. Even, she just, she didn't necessarily deep dive into everything, but she gave a lot of talking points, mm-hmm. and I felt like this video would have been over an hour long if I went off all of them. Yeah, of um, course. But yeah, like, let me know what you think. Like, why... Obviously, again, I'm going to say this. Besides race, because it's so blatant and obvious, but why do you genuinely think, like, certain artists just aren't accepted? Mm. And why certain ones are? Yeah. yeah. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, and we have a little lighthearted poll, Keep It Simple. Which Beyonce single do you prefer? 16 Carriages or Texas Hold'em? I will say Texas Hold On because I like more upbeat things. I will say 16 Carriages because I love seeing another side of Beyonce. Okay, fair. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Bye. Bye.